which is generally known as Big Ben. Big Ben is the name of the huge 17-ton bell that sits inside it. The Houses of Parliament, most of it dates from the 1800s, except this bit here on the left. That's the oldest part dating from the 1100s. Okay, smiling now. That's better. Here we are in front of Westminster Abbey. Traditional burial place of the English royalty. Kings have been coronated here since a long time. Of course, the most recent burials and coronations have not taken place here. This is the front side of the Westminster Abbey, the side which has been most recently built. This is the Methodist Central Hall adjoining the Westminster Abbey. Beautiful building in stone, built in the Baroque style. All the buildings surrounding the Westminster Abbey have been here for centuries. On the left, this is Scotland Yard. You can see the revolving sign here telling you the name. On the right, this little area of green that you can see here was at one time a churchyard and some of the people who were buried there, one of them was a man called Captain Blood and he is the only person ever to have tried to steal the crown jewels. He tucked them down his trousers and went running off down the street. But they did manage to catch him, they managed to get the crown jewels back <laughs> and he was never really punished and nobody knows exactly now that is dedicated just to the choir boys they have 40 boys there who all sing in the choir they have to also study musical instruments as well as singing and normal academic uh, procedures when right, you will see just on the corner of the square a lovely statue of Sir Winston Churchill. He was our Prime Minister during the Second the World War. On the right now. He wasn't very keen on having a statue of himself outside because he said he didn't want pigeons doing that. Do what he says. <laughs> <laughs> so his was built in the 1100s, not finished until the 1300s. And it was here that the Queen Mother's body lay in state before her funeral in Westminster. On the left, this fantastic statue is Richard the Lionheart, King Richard I. He was around in the 1100s. He's known as the biggest filing cabinet in the world because everything that happens in Parliament is recorded in a document called Hansard and every single copy of Hansard right up till the very last session of Parliament. And you get a very fine view here on the left. You'll be able to see the London Eye, one of the new, newest additions to the London skyline. Something you might like to do. It's a ride um, that takes half an hour. The wheel moves very slowly all the time and it takes half an hour to go all the way round on one complete circuit. So hopefully we And the River Thames is, was then, a tidal river. So it made it very easy for them to bring their goods in and out. And London became one of the great trading nations of the Roman Empire with the rest of Europe. Florence, Florence and Italy. Ah, museum. Now I'm sure the London Eye was built to celebrate the millennium, the year 2000. These glass pods hold about 26 people. And as I mentioned, it takes half an hour. And just beyond that, the very solid concrete sort of buildings are the um, Royal National Theatre, the National Film Theatre and the Hayward Gallery, just over there to your left. Yeah. The style of architecture is called brutalism. 
I think you'll agree that a bit of a brute. Uh, London IMAX cinema, one of these huge cinemas where you sort of sit and feel that you're in the middle of the action. And we're going to go over Waterloo Bridge and we can see of London where the Romans settled 2,000 years ago. Today this is the business district, newest addition to London skyline. It's called the Swiss Ray Building, going to be used by Swiss Ray investment bankers. But generally people call it the Gherkin. The Gherkin. Like the green vegetable. <laughs> On the left you can see Westminster again. Westminster is much younger than the city, founded a thousand years ago. You get a great view there again of the Houses of Parliament and the London Eye. That house on the right is um, offices for the Inland yeah. Revenue, Boo Hiss, don't like those. Mm, but it's also a home to various art galleries, including um, a permanent outpost of the Hermitage Museum in St. Petersburg. They have so much stuff at St. Petersburg, they can never sense. ever show it all. Are just surrounding an area of London known as Covent Garden, somewhere you might consider yeah. selling it. There's lots of places to eat and drink, and there's usually some street entertainment as well. A bit like Speaker's Corner with strange people talking about strange things. Well, here you get strange people doing strange things. <laughs> but, uh, usually worth having a look. It's where the nuns grew the vegetables for the monks at Westminster Abbey. It then changed into our main fruit and vegetable market. Uh, no longer used from the 1970s, but it has now been transformed into this very busy, lively area. Lively in the day commission there as well, where we go to pick up our visas if we want to travel to India. Always extremely busy in there. And next door is the offices of the BBC World Service. This is where they broadcast in over 40 different languages from this building where the man is standing with the yellow coat on. Yeah, over there. Yeah. And to our left are the buildings of the London School of Economics, part of the University of London. J.F. Kennedy and Mick Jagger were both pupils there for a while. Do you know Mick Jagger of the Rolling Stones? He was 60 yesterday. 60 years old. Any of you read Harry Potter books? Yeah. If you've seen the film of Harry Potter, this building on the right is the Australian High Commission, but in the film they used it for Gringotts Bank, oh. the Magician's Bank, the Wizard's Bank, not Magician's, are they? On the right, this is St. Clement Dane's Church. Can you see the damage on the wall there? Yes. That's all damage from World War II bombs. And on the left, this is the Royal Courts of Justice. This is the Civil and Libel Courts often see TV cameras all lined up out here waiting to get pictures of people coming out either looking absolutely delighted or completely fed up of the city. We're now in the city of London. When the Queen visits she has to stop there and ask permission of the Lord Mayor to carry it now. That's one of the oldest buildings in London. We had a very bad fire. The Great Fire of London in 1666 destroyed four-fifths of London but that black and white building was one of very few to survive. This is Fleet Street, and this is where all of our national newspapers were printed up until the 1980s. They moved away though to more convenient, larger print happened there, or something that stood there at one particular time. A man called Sir Christopher Wren was commissioned to rebuild 51 of these city churches and also St. Paul's, Paul's Cathedral. Cathedral. The previous St. Paul's was completely destroyed by the fire. Time. Just take a glimpse to your right between these buildings and you will see a bridge crossing over the river. This is a foot bridge. This is the Millennium Bridge. See some people going over there. It was built for the year 2000. On the right, it's at, it's at uh, almost a street level, just slightly raised up, and it's the remains of the Temple of Mithras. Now, it's just coming up level with Gary now on the right. You can just see that low brick wall there. Oh. Mithras was a Persian sun god, much, much honoured by Roman soldiers. And we always knew that, I said we had a mayor of London, he covers all of London. The Lord Mayor just looks after the city here. And he has, um, we've had that office since 1189. To the left, that building on the corner is the Bank of England. 
This is where all of the very country. narrow streets, when people built their houses, they built up and then they built out and up and out to get more space. So by the time you were on the second or third floor, you could probably shake hands with the person across the road. They would be that close laying the functional bridge. But first, I'm just going to want you to look to your left and you're going to see the monument. And this is a memorial to the Great Fire of London. You can walk up to the top if you look right up to where the fire actually started. So we're going to cross over the river again.